We're about to look at three ways that you can troubleshoot you guys. If you guys can understand number two, you guys should be able to troubleshoot almost any electrical issue that there is. Now, number one is gonna help set up the foundation for number two and number three. They're all incredibly useful. I am a service-based electrician, so I do service calls and I also service existing buildings. And the only thing that you're gonna have to do this with is going to be a circuit tracer with finding faults, with finding issues, so that way you can do it quickly, easily, and safely. For all of those of you who are beginners, don't get in panels if you're not comfortable. We're gonna be using this new Ideal Sure Trace. You guys, we have partnered up with Ideal to bring you this video here today. This is the transmitter here, and this is for the larger version. There are two new versions that just came out. There will be links to all this stuff in the description, and this here is gonna be the receiver. Now. I like this one for a couple reasons. I'm not gonna cover them all up front. I'm gonna cover all the details of this at the end. Issues are bound to happen no matter who does the install, no matter how good and skilled you are. The more you do, the more chances there are for there to be some sort of mistake somewhere. Troubleshooting is a part of the game. And even for you veterans, there are a couple of tips and tricks in here that should hopefully help you out too. I know they helped me out when I figured it out or when somebody showed me. That's how it goes. You never know until you know. Number one is obviously gonna be finding circuit breakers, okay? As a service electrician, my job is not just to find faults, I don't just do service calls, but I also work in existing buildings. And what that means is, it means you don't wanna turn off the wrong stuff. Uh, because especially with the factories and the facilities that I work in, having machines shut down or pieces of equipment that help run a machine shut down is the most outrageous thing. It, it is more money than I've ever seen in my life to have some of these machines shut down for an hour. So when I tell you that it's important that obviously a circuit breaker finder is gonna help you find those circuits. It is as easy as connecting it to the hot and the neutral. And then from there, going back to the panel and running this here receiver over those breakers to really help you find out and to make sure that you're turning off the right breaker. Because if you turn off the wrong one, it could cost a lot of money. This is the most obvious function of a circuit tracer. Obviously, it's a necessity to have, especially for those of you who are trying to work on stuff that has already been energized. But when we go to number two, it's gonna be the biggest thing, and it's what this circuit tracer does differently than most other circuit tracers, and it has continuity on it, okay? Continuity is a big thing because you can tell if one wire is touching another somewhere down the line. So when you do get a service call, and you have to go check out a breaker that's tripping, there's a circuit that won't turn on, it's a set of lights or it's a set of outlets along a wall, whatever it is, it's tripping. You have to figure out where it's faulting at. Now, when it faults, that means that the hot is touching the neutral or the ground. It's pulling too much power because it has a short, it has a uh, less of a distance to travel and there's no resistance and so it pulls more power than it should. The breaker, as it should, trips. All that to say that you can find that so much more easily with this circuit tracer here. And typically people like to go to the panel to do this. I prefer not to if I don't have to. So we'll say that I have a wall full of outlets that aren't working. I'll pick the end of a wall and I'll plug this into it here and I'll, I'll put the leads in between the hot and the neutral and I'll see if there's continuity. If there is, that means that's where the fault is happening. If it doesn't show up there, then I'll put it between the hot and the ground. Now, there's a couple other options when it comes to what's wrong with stuff. It could be a bad breaker, it could be in the panel, but typically it tends to be at devices. Devices are typically the thing that fails. I have definitely seen my fair share of breakers that have just failed. When you do have a tripped breaker, it's very easy to go in if you know where that circuit is located to find it, which is, you, you're gonna know because typically it gets reported because people find the outlet's not working, not they find the breaker tripped. You can do this from the panel to find the continuity, or you can do this from one of the devices that is located on that circuit. Now, the reason why I also, I love this, and it's so much faster than just using a meter, is because it actually will tell you how close you are to that short. Because what this device does is it sends a signal, it knows where those wires are connecting. So it knows where your hot and your neutral are actually making contact because it's sending signals along both of them all the way to the point where it touches. This is cool because it actually gives you a strength reading, not only on the front of this receiver, but also on the bottom, which makes it incredibly easy, especially you guys when there's faults that are in a wall 
instead of actually at a device, it's impossible to find, okay? So it's actually, you're actually able to find that and you can tell, hey, this is the part of drywall that we're gonna have to tear off to make this repair instead of taking a wild guess. The continuity portion also comes in handy. If you have neutrals tied in from GFCI breakers or a GFCI at the end of one of them and it gets tied in with a neutral to another breaker, you can actually go to the panel and test it out and to test continuity. Obviously, we're not supposed to share neutrals, but in existing buildings, because that's what a lot of service work is, is servicing existing buildings, new installs in existing buildings. That's typically what I do. Now, I did do a fire alarm install project uh, probably about five years ago now. And the, at the end, you have to troubleshoot it. You have to go, it's an existing building, okay? It's full. To shut this building down for an hour is like the most ridiculous amount of money ever. It is insane. It's one of the largest companies. I can't talk about it. After the install, right, we got it all done. And before we plugged everything in and turned it all on and did all this stuff, we actually went through and checked continuity between the uh, positive and the negative because if there was a short, that fire alarm set off and everybody has to exit the entire building, which is like not good at all. It's ex they crazy expensive, more money than I've ever seen. So we went through and had to test it out. Now that I'm looking back at stuff like that, that we've done where you test continuity to see if things are connecting and where they're connecting at, we had to go through and manually do that with every single device and go through, not not everyone, but the leads from each one. And to find that fault, because we had, I think, one fault, we had to go through and test it at different devices and find out which one was the closest. First, with this, you just get to plug it in at the source and you can, this does work with low voltage wires. It works with anything that can conduct electricity. So that makes it excellent. But from there, we could have just went through and found this and it would have been uh, so much faster and so much easier to actually have a strength reading on this than to just be finding the numbers, having to unplug and plug everything, always having to reconnect. The amount of time, because it was a very, very large install. So the amount of time that we spent uh, doing that and running through and doing all this stuff, it, it would have saved us a ton of time and ended up saving our company a ton of money. But that is also part of it is when you do all these large installs, there are going to be some faults. There's gonna be some stuff. You guys know how this works. When you're on a really large project, it's it's not it's just not possible for everything to go completely smoothly the entire time. So when you do have that breaker tripping and you find out that it's from the hot to the neutral, and if you use this in the same room as you, you can tell anyway because of the signals, the signifiers on this, it'll tell you. And that's the other great thing about this is that it works for energized or de-energized circuits, which is great because if there is a fault, you aren't gonna have an energized circuit if that breaker is tripped. If you're having intermittent issues, then you're gonna have, it's the worst. Intermittent issues are the hardest to find. So if that breaker's on and it does trip every now and then, that's something that is gonna be a lot harder to find but it is possible. If you have this plugged into the circuit you're trying to turn off and you're using this, you you will see a lightning bolt up here that will actually tell you that it's on, the circuit's on, and once you hit that flip that breaker, if that is the correct circuit, which it should be because this is super accurate and the sensitivity levels on this are great, then you'll see that lightning bolt disappear and you'll know that that circuit that you're tracing is no longer energized. Those are the two major methods that you can use to actually use this to troubleshoot. Now, the the first one is gonna be on energized circuits and it's gonna be 100%, like it'll just tell you if that's the circuit that you're on, right? The second one is gonna be de-energized, so it's when it's off and it'll help you find continuity, it'll help you know where things are connecting so you can find faults, which is very, very usable. Now, the third one is gonna have to do with that first portion, okay? It's gonna have to do with circuits that are energized because like I said earlier, you don't wanna shut off circuits that are being used, especially when you're in a facility or a factory. And I actually ran a, a service call for somebody that I know very well from my church, and they were having some issues with some outlets. They were going off and on and doing all this stuff. Well, I plugged this circuit tracer in. She was working from home that day, and so I plugged this in to test, to find out which outlets were gonna be affected when I turned that circuit off because I wanted to turn it off so I could check some stuff out. Now, before we did that, I found out that her router was actually in one of those outlets that was gonna be affected. She was working from home, 
So obviously we don't want that stuff to be down while she's working. It's easier to tell. You can actually go up to the circuit and say, this one is affected. It's on the same circuit as the one we're trying to work on. We know it's gonna be affected. So when you do that in a facility, when you do that at somebody's home, when you, you can find out what is on a breaker very, very easily and that way you know it's gonna be affected and you can help set it up. Also, a part of the third thing, energized circuits, tracing them. You can find a wire and follow it so that way if you're looking especially for like a switch leg or if you're looking for the power from a switch, you can find it. Uh, and especially if you're like going up into an attic and you're solo, I work solo a lot. So being alone, having tools that will actually tell me, hey, this is the right wire, right? If I plug this into a switch and I go up top and, and I'm in the attic and I'm looking, there's no way for me to really be able to tell outside of having a circuit tracer without turning off and going up and down and up and down and up and down to figure it out. So this is the easiest way to actually find out which wires, which circuits are connected to which. And that way you can either make a splice in the attic, you can make a splice in a box, whatever it is, you have the ability to determine what is what without having to go back and forth and test and do a bunch of crazy stuff. So it's not just finding the actual breaker, but it's finding that circuit along its way back to the breaker or past that device that you're trying to, to manipulate, to use, or to feed off of for another device or a, a new install, whatever it may be. It makes your life incredibly easy when it comes to service installs, especially when you're going back and forth or you have an area that has limited access. It makes it easy. Now, as far as the device itself, it does come with a bunch of attachments. We have some alligator clips that clip into the leads. Uh, we have a, a set of leads that are empty that are for those alligator clips, or they are for these here, which are for outlets. There's three of them total, obviously three pronged outlet. One is for your hot, one's for your neutral, and one's for your ground. And then there's also a regular plug-in so it's actually got the leads attached here and it's just a two-prong outlet which makes it incredibly fast and easy and like i said going into somebody's home and and plugging this in instead of having to go tear apart their whole panel you guys also when you get into older homes too you really don't want to open their panels up like if you don't have to you avoid it because they're messy, they're nasty, and the more times you open and close that, the more likely there is to create a fault at the panel, the more likely there is to do all these different things. So if you can actually have everything sealed off and still test, like I said, plugging this in at a device that isn't working, that already has a fault, to find out if there's continuity between the hot and the ground or hot and the neutral, it's so much faster and easier. And you can actually tell how far away it is, which is incredible. Especially when you're young, you like want to get in panels and like figure out uh, the, the, you know, like coolest way of like, that's scary, which you, you get over pretty fast. And eventually you'll realize the faster you can do it in and out, the easier you can do it without having to deal with a bunch of stuff that you shouldn't have to, especially when it comes to working on other people's work. If it's a house that was just done and you did it and you're like, I know this panel, I'm comfortable with it. It's everything set up well, fine. But when you go in after somebody else and it's like a handyman and you are like, you end up fixing a lot of other people's mistakes, even though you're not really getting paid to fix other people's mistakes, just avoid it. Now, as far as the actual transmitter here, it does have a list of voltages as well. So you can even tell what voltage is being put out by this here. I like that. It's also got a continuity signal here so you can actually tell which again gets rid of the need to have also with you a meter uh, which just makes it makes life a lot easier obviously you're going to have a meter there but you don't have to use it consistently when you have this out it also has this sweet uh, stand on the back so you can actually set it up on stuff and it also has a place back here for you to put some meter attachments like a magnet so that part of it is absolutely fantastic as well especially when you're using this in panels you don't want to just have it hanging or flopping or find some random place to set it up on because then if it falls and it pulls your wires and you're not there who knows now in the middle here is this lightning bolt in the middle which tells you if the circuit is on it also will tell you if it's ac or dc down here at the bottom and it raven references whether or not you need ppe or not which is cool but this little lightning bolt will tell you if there is power there or not it's incredibly simple and incredibly useful which is something that i really love the receiver also has a bunch of features first of all there's a light on it which sounds dumb but when you have 
a light that you've put down or whatever. It just makes it easy. You just have to hold the power button here. Uh, it also is a non-contact voltage tester, which is super great that they put that in there, super easy to, and you just have to press that button and it turns into a non-contact voltage tester. You can also turn the volume down. This is the portion that beeps, so if you are in an area where you want it, you can keep it on and you can hear the beeping and you can know whether or not the circuit's off or on or whether or not there, it's showing signal or not. And finally, the sensitivity button. The sensitivity is also a thing that makes this super easy. It makes it very usable changing the sensitivity. It's the only thing that you have to really get used to in order to use this incredibly effectively, but this tool is pretty dummy proof. Like it does, it makes troubleshooting pretty easy. When I started using this, I, a lot of the things that I already do to troubleshoot with a meter, it does, but it does it way better. It does it way more effectively and it saves me a ton of time and a ton of effort. There are two versions of this as well. This is the 948. They also have the 946, which has a couple less features. And this one here goes up to 600 volts. Their 946 only goes up to 480. It comes with the same attachments. It just doesn't have this panel on the front to tell you the voltage. The receiver doesn't have the non-contact voltage tester. And it does do things that a meter won't do because its ability to work on live circuits and to still trace on live circuits, you can't do that with your meter. I can't tell you guys how much time I've wasted uh, running back and forth or even testing out circuits alone that aren't tripping, but testing out circuits that I, I wanna make sure that I have the right pairs in or that people didn't label or whatever it is. So you go in and you tie them together on one end and you have to check continuity, then you have to mark them, then you have to do all this stuff. With this, it's just, it's so much easier. And, and it also works on low voltage circuits as well. So that part's nice. It works on anything conductive. So it really is almost endless how far you can take this, but it's a great tool to have in your arsenal. If you guys need something like this, you guys, there's gonna be links in the description for all of this. Remember, it's all for his glory, and I will see you guys on the next one.